Hey guys, this is Tyler Zombro with Tread Athletics, and today we want to talk about splitters and pitch design with this pitch. So splitters, there are a ton of variables at play. Honestly, thinking about the profiles of them all, really hard to exactly pinpoint to a movement profile we're trying to get. Again, there's a wide variety of splitters in the game. I think an overarching thing that you're gonna see with all these splitters though, is having good depth. And one thing that we, we've seen a lot in terms of creating a vertical separation pitch for a higher slot guy is splitters oftentimes work better than changeups. So if a guy is throwing out of a really high slot, it's hard for him to figure out how to tilt the axis on his changeup and really create depth. This is where you see a lot of hoppy changeups, but utilizing a splitter is something that can be really beneficial for these guys. As I touched on, there, there's a lot of variability, but honestly, that could be a good thing with a splitter. When you're throwing a pitch with such low RPMs, the movement can vary in terms of depth with arm side, depth with cut, and of course, a lot of people have always said, if, if they can't catch it, they can't hit it. If you don't know where it's going, the hitter certainly doesn't know. And so in that case, a little bit of that variability can be advantageous. So when looking at splitters, uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about is a little bit of hand size, because uh, I think that's certainly important. Uh, and when you, when you look at how a splitter is gripped, it does put a lot of tension on flexor digitorum and that flexor bundle in the throw. This is something, again, I would really be aware of if you're a guy who is transitioning to throwing more and more splitters uh, is there's been a little bit of an injury history with the pitch I know Josh Johnson is a guy who threw a ton of splitters in his career and had some medial elbow issues so again with this pitch you're creating pressure in the throw without actually delivering the ball being mindful of are you compensating in one way or another to actually throw it so keep that in mind with the splitter the big thing that I have seen is really finding a grip that's comfortable so either uh, in the middle of the laces I know some guys go to the bottom uh, however you want to go around the shoe. I've seen guys throw it with an offset four seam interface. Uh, really, however, you can create a little bit of consistency while not having efficient spin out of the hand. Uh, we talk about seam shifted wake, for instance. If a splitter comes out with a little bit of a cut profile, perfectly fine. I know like Tanaka is a guy who's had a little bit of that. Again, you're looking at creating depth and whether or not it cuts or goes to the arm side, you have options and really it doesn't matter a ton as long as you're getting well below that fastball profile. So in thinking about that, when you're throwing splitters, uh, looking at data, I would really just analyze where the depth is at. So for instance, I have an athlete, Jamison McGrain, who throws a ton of splitters uh, in a pitch design bullpen. We're gonna have a lot of variability with where the pitch is at horizontally. It could be anywhere from negative two, negative three to positive 15 in terms of horizontal movement. But that depth is generally always staying below seven vertically. So he's creating great depth, whether that pitch has additional arm side movement or it alludes to cutting. Again, the depth is gonna be the quality with the splitter that you want. Really, when you think about it, if you're killing a ton of spin with the splitter, you're gonna automatically kill a lot of uh, induced vertical break with it. So. You've seen a lot of guys get it down to six, seven, eight hundred RPMs. And when you're able to do that, you're almost creating like that knuckleball profile where you're not going to have that much positive vert, especially if it's low RPMs and low efficiency. That's where you can really get a lot of that crazy movement. So a lot of variation with splitters again, but I think the variability is not necessarily a bad thing as long as you have a general concept of where you're going to throw it. Can you keep it in the zone when you need? But make sure that that depth profile stays consistent. Slide around, try to be in the middle of the laces, like a, a two seam interface. You can go in the bottom of the shoe, top of the shoe, uh, and then also with that offset four seam. Um, again, making sure health-wise you feel comfortable with the pitch. Is your hand big enough? Is your palm big enough? A lot of variables there. But overall, really good pitch that can give you a lot of depth if you're struggling with the changeup. So if that is the case, go ahead and give that a shot. Uh, if you guys have had a successful experience with splitters, let us know in the comments below. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one.